You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hey, this is John Preston, Marine Combat Veteran and Pacific Records Recording Artist. i just reaching out to have you check out our new album, Battle Cry, Sons of America's Heroes, an album featuring phenomenal other combat veteran artists like Scott Brown of the Scooter Brown Band, Brian Weaver, Rowdy Johnson, just an incredible mix of people. This is all veterans telling our stories and our lives, and we're giving 100% of our proceeds to the Valkyrie Initiative to help veterans and first responders integrate back into society. I, myself, I've battled with post-traumatic stress for many years and lost my own brother, a Marine Corps veteran, to suicide. I ask that you step with us and make this happen. We are in pre-order right now and release on March 17th. Go to iTunes, go to Amazon, buy, buy, buy. We plan on making the charts and making it at a very high level, and your support right now makes a difference. This is the release of my new song, Superman Falls, which is actually about the loss of my own brother, which happened last year. And I would love for everyone to check it out, to listen, and hopefully it'll make a difference in many lives. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 687. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our riding into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable riders to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a rider's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your riding into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. Get your free inventor's information. Call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com.
You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Welcome to We Don't Have Cookies with your host, Jason Marshall. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to We Don't Have Cookies. I'm your host, Jason Marshall. With me today is somebody who hasn't been on the show since February 6th which was about the time I said he would be on the show every month and added him to the website. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> it's my good Wrong. friend. Wrong. <laughs> it's my good friend, legendary wrestling manager, Kenny the Star Maker Bolin. How you doing? The king of podcasts, in case you haven't seen the memes lately. The <laughs> billion download man, in case you haven't seen the downloads. I got to bring man something up. got his ass beat down on Jerry Lawler's <laughs> podcast a few days ago, in case you haven't seen the memes and the reports. That's what I was about to bring up. Yeah. I did a show with Mama Kate, which will be out on Thursday. Who's, who's Mama Kate? She's a comedian, right? Yeah. We did an episode called Martial Law where two people go at it, and I make a decision on who is right. It's pretty much the people's court for we don't have cookies. How do I get in on that show? <laughs> you need to come on here for martial law with Jim Cornette over the dumpster food. <laughs> which, oh, my God. Which we'll get into that later. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. After the show uh, was recorded. 40-year rib, folks, that he had. I <laughs> had to tell him after 40 years what he did. After the show was recorded, She brought up Andy Kaufman and Jerry Lawler's feud. Right. And I had to tell her that, hey, I am in a book, which is Kenny Boland's book, I Probably Screwed You To, available on Amazon. And even better, available through me at a little bit higher price, but you get it autographed, not only by me, but maybe even Jim Cornette, if you don't mind paying a few extra bucks. And you should buy two. That way, when you're done reading it, you can read it again. You can read it again, yeah. Some people have read it as many as four times comes in five different colors for just that purpose. I don't want to bore you. I don't want you to read the black copy and then go, God damn, I don't want to read that one again. You got a pink one? Yeah. You got a red one? Mm Mm-hmm. Got a blue one? Yeah, I'm wearing a crown and a robe in that one. Uh, You got white? Well, of course. It's the racist thing to do. You got to have a white one. I'm racial equality over here. I have the discontinued red one right before you change the color up. I don't have a yellow one. You don't? Maybe I should get get, Well, there's yellow and black and red. Yellow one, right? Well, white, black, and yellow. Yeah, there's white okay. with yellow in it. Uh, the artwork done by a famous artist down here. I can't think of his name, but a uh, very famous artist. But I had to tell Joe her. Joe Slack. Joe, if I don't think of his name, I'm going to get yelled at. <laughs> Joe Slack. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Joe Slack didn't do that one because I originally gave him credit in the book for doing it. Uh-huh. He didn't do it. His, his name was Travis Heckle. Okay. So just pick one. <laughs> one of those guys did it. Travis Heckle, as a matter of fact, just did a new picture of me as Kingpin uh, because of the controversy on Jerry Lawler's podcast just a couple days ago. They wanted to rename that show Dinner with Kings, and Lawler shit on that. He didn't do it. And, uh, of course, the king of podcasts, Lawler had a problem with that. I didn't realize I was going into an ambush situation. <laughs> and uh, But uh, Travis Heckle uh, designed a uh, picture of me as Kingpin, that is on Twitter right now. So if you go to my Twitter account, tab down far enough, look for Memphis Rasslin. I think that's what he, he works as. And look for the two pictures of me as Kingpin. One, the way Kingpin really looked. And then, I, of course, I went prima donna on him, and I demanded to be put into my famous periwinkle suit that I wore for years at OVW. And, and now I'm, I'm on there as Kingpin holding a diamond uh, uh, scepter or something, I guess it is. I thought maybe I should have my briefcase, but they haven't done that yet. So what do you do? So now that I've interrupted whatever fucking story you would tell me. (laughs) You buried the lead. (laughs) Well, what else do I do? But what was weird is I told her that I'm in your book. Buried taller, too, but that's not where I got. (laughs) And my quote is right across the page from Jerry Lawler's quote. Well, I'll be damned. I didn't know that. And the funniest part is, after I get done telling her this, Mm -hmm. less than an hour later, 
Yeah. You sent me a message with the link to you on Jerry Lawler's <laughs> podcast. At the, at the shit that had gone south down there. <laughs> uh, I think the lead up that I sent you was the, um, ma- uh, it should have been massacre in Memphis, but it was a mauling in Memphis. <laughs> Wasn't quite a massacre because I held my own pretty good. Yeah, and I thought so. Really got, nobody, well, if it weren't for that fifth cop, I might have emerged victorious out of that thing, but the fifth one got me. Um, but massacre in Memphis would have been, had I just been put out of commission, laid out, n- unable to continue, but that didn't happen. I served six hours in the Memphis County Polk. I can't go into full detail of that because I've promised an exclusive on my own show, the summer of Boland, the new uh, podcast I'm doing with Brian last people seem for whatever reason, to be very excited about that. I mean, we were kind of excited about it because Brian never gets to speak on Cornette show when he <laughs> and I are on. I don't so, think anybody can on that show. Well, as you've noticed, I can. Well, yeah. <laughs> don't shut me up. He, I, there's no fear of me with Jimmy Cornette. And when it comes to promos, basketball, driving a car, uh, getting pretty women, I've beaten Jimmy at every single thing we've ever done, and that includes cutting promos and talking and wrestling. I was 212-0 and 0 at Oldham County High. They called me Take Down Bowling. I'm undefeated. I don't get beat at much, and I'll be damned if Jimmy's ever going to beat me at anything. <laughs> One thing I wanted to talk to you about is both of us recently moved. We Your did. house looks like we a both, million bucks, man. We both, well, it's funny you say that. Guess what this house sells for? A million bucks? Well, <laughs> technically, technically, the home was estimated <laughs> at $1.3 million. Christopher has the upper level. And uh, the people that were renting the lower level finally moved out. And uh, I had to break a lease where I was at. I just got the court summons on that today. Uh, <laughs> I had to break a lease. They're, they're really going easy on me. It could have got a lot uglier because I had a lot of months left on that lease. Mm-hmm. And they're, on, they're only wanting me to pay one month. So that's not so bad. Normally, I've stuck it to every landlord I've ever had that ever tried to fuck with me. But they didn't really so much fuck with me as I had to fuck with them because I didn't want to lose out on his house. I'm yeah. going from a fucking $600 apartment to a $1.3 million house that my son is already in, and now we are both going to be the only tenants of this house. He's got the upper level. I've got the lower. So, uh, And I'm not trying to claim I bought a $1.3 million home. We rent it, but we signed a long-term deal. I paid a lot of cash up front to lock us in for five years. Then they turn up, they have, we get new owners. Like the first month we move in, we're going, holy shit, they're going to try and tear up that deal. They're going to try and evict us. But it turns out they really like us and they're happy to have us. As a matter of fact, they even offered my son to match the five-year deal that I have down here. And they would reduce his rent by like 75 bucks a month or something if he would do that. So he also paid up for five years because we don't want to own it because there is, we have an option out. We, we can pay an extra month and get out of it if we have to, because there's a very good chance my son might be going to uh, Europe if uh, if Donald Trump imposes martial law, and there's a lot of people thinking that might happen. Now, before I had to cut out the last 20 minutes of unfunny stuff out, <laughs> I was... <laughs> Put that in another show, right? <laughs> you had better after I'll beat your ass. I know where you live, and I know how big your single wide is. <laughs> That 45 acres of land don't intimidate me. I'll come up <laughs> in a golf cart. I know you know I won't run you down, but I'll ride you down. My neighbor rides a golf cart around his property. I and it's about I've seen your property. It's intimidating. Well, his is about the sixth of the size of mine. I can't figure out why oh, he needs geez. a golf cart. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it looks ridiculous, man. You got my yard, huh? <laughs> no, I got a decent... Well, you've seen the pictures of my place. It's yeah. one of the old... Uh, what would you... A Victorian homes? Is that what you would call it? Victorian yeah. Yeah, it looks really nice. Built in the 1890s, and uh, you've seen inside and out. I've posted a lot of it. I'm very proud of it. It's, you know, it's not a, it's not Trump Tower, <laughs> but then again, I didn't pay Trump Tower, Trump Tower money for it. And but it's got the big 12, 13 foot ceilings. It's got those bay, those great big windows. That, uh, as a matter of fact, I had a lot of trouble finding curtains, uh, drapes that would go from ceiling to floor. Uh, I found out the hard way that 96 inches uh, don't do it. Uh, it gets close, and I said, fuck it. <laughs> I'm not going to find 100-inch curtains just because they reach the floor. Uh, they just go right to the edge of the bottom of the window, and just a little bit of light gets through. And I said, well, fuck it. I ain't that big a dick. I'll just deal with it. So um, I went through the same thing recently. That's kind of funny you, got, you brought that up. 
You got great big windows too? Yeah, yeah. I got an old home, and I've the windows never are seen huge. A single man. wide in the world that's got great big windows. Now you're now you're <laughs> fucking with everybody. It's the first really single wide built in the 1800s. Either that, or that's the single wide the guy lived in who's actually building your big home. One of the two. <laughs> it might, might have been the outhouse for the guy actually doing the work to build your place. Maybe I got there earlier than I thought. <laughs> that one thought that was your home. You did say that you guys are coming down for a cookout sometime. I'm looking forward to that. Eyes are ribbing you. I wouldn't come up there. Are you kidding me? <laughs> are you Ohio? sure? <laughs> uh, what's the, you're in Dayton, right? The Dayton area? Yeah. How many hours is that from here? About three? About three, yeah. Oh, I think I can suck up three hours for some good hamburgers, maybe some brats, some cheese, a little relish, some you tater know- salad, some beans, corn on the cob. Maya, yeah. Maya, by the way, loves corn on the cob, and she's having a fit over your property. <laughs> Many times I'll see her at my, my 50-inch computer screen in the living room just gawking at your property going, oh, my God. Oh, my God, I'd love to be there. I said, shut up, bitch. we got a fucking <laughs> t- a 25-foot yard out in the front and a 50-foot yard in the back. Calm down. Now, are my pictures the screensaver on your computer? <laughs> uh, they are on hers, I'll guarantee you. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Actually, my new kingpin picture that they made of me is uh, now my screensaver on mine. <laughs> it was the comic book one that Simon did for me, and you talk about a shirt that's been selling well, but the buzz I saw about me made as Kingpin. Are you familiar with who Kingpin is? Yeah. I didn't know much about him. I'd only seen him on a couple of Spider-Man cartoons. And uh, God damn, it was an awesome picture. And But they made me just like Kingpin, only my head, and I'm wearing it. And I said, well, put my crown on. I want people to know it's me. Make it again, but make it with I'm such a dick. <laughs> but make it with a crown. They do this shit for me for free, and then I'd be a dick with them and make them enhance it. And then they send it back to me, and I'm still wearing a white suit. I said, I'd never be. I said, big as I am, I wouldn't be caught dead in a fucking white suit. Not anymore. Last white suit I was in was 1999. I got the picture to prove it. <laughs> uh, so do me a favor. Put me in my famous purple suit, my periwinkle suit that I wore at all the big shows at the at OVW when I was feuding with the undertaker and steve austin and the rock and all these guys that came down here it's put me in my purple suit so they redo it again and put me in my purple suit i said well god damn i wouldn't carry a fucking scepter i said i'd have my briefcase and they said well fuck you take it as is so i, I found out where the line was <laughs> they're not going to put my briefcase apparently in that new picture unless i hire somebody else to do it and the key word there was hire, so that ain't going to happen. <laughs> All the pups are gone. Okay, uh, I had one dick back out of getting his puppy. I rescued four puppies, one cat, and, of course, we lost a rabbit. And if you've heard the Jim Cornette experience yet, have you heard the latest experience that I was on? Uh, I don't think so. When did it come out? Uh, not last week, but the week before. You've got to hear it. We tell the story of Mozart, the pit bull that a homeless man gave my son at McDonald's, and this is all... 100% the God's honest truth and an absolute shoot, but still some of the funniest shit you'll ever hear. Yeah, I, I didn't hear that one. I'll have to go download uh, that. It was uh, two weeks ago. Uh, so I wasn't on this week, but I was on the week before. That's the show you got to hear because we talk about Mozart the Pitbull and uh, the big surprise of when we drop on Jimmy and he did not know because we would not. I didn't want him told. That's when he found out. That I did me, hear that part. You did hear that part? So did how did I miss the Bulldog part? story? I uh, don't know, because that, uh, that was told before we dropped the bomb on Cornette. Hmm. You probably heard it in pieces. Yeah, I must have been busy YouTube, or something. What they're doing on YouTube to where they break the show up in pieces. Because at the end is when he did the big rant on Russo. Okay. So that's one piece. Mozart's another piece. And me and Brian La- No, me and Brian Last are in the same piece that Mozart's in. Hmm. So, yeah, my whole segment is one segment. I'm not broken up. Okay. But it's like three pieces to the show. So bring up my part. It's on YouTube. If not, I'll find a link and send it to you. But it is a must hear. you got to hear this one. And uh, I'm sure we're going to touch on it again. But uh, Mozart had a run-in with a rabbit, that uh, the first owner that we gave him to. Mozart had five owners in 12 hours. Jesus Christ. But but his last... His last <laughs> Holy trip, shit, man. How'd that he's, happen? He's, he's really a good dog. He, just, <laughs> he, just, he was a victim of circumstance. He had a lot of... Well, I'll, I'll, I'll (laughs) tell you this much of it. First of all, he had his original owner and then Chris is at McDonald's and the guy says, look at your dog. I think he wants to go home with me. And the guy, Chris, not explaining the guy says, Oh my God, would you please take him home with you? My my girlfriend just had a baby. She won't let me see the baby as long as I have Mozart. 
His, all right, I'm going to tell you something else. His name wasn't Mozart. I didn't even tell Cornette this because we were trying to get him a home. But he's got a home now. But the goddamn dog's name was Killer. Oh, shit. And he's got a head the size <laughs> of a fucking alligator. But and I almost didn't let him in the house. He scared the fuck out of me when I saw his head. I said, well, if he turns on any of us, there's no four of us that are going to get the dog off from us. So I didn't originally want him in. And Chris is telling oh, dad, he's the sweetest thing. He's a big baby. He'll jump up in your lap and lick your face. I said, he'll jump up in my lap and eat my face. I'll be goddamn. <laughs> so sure enough, after about an hour of arguing with him at the door that that dog is not coming to my home, I reluctantly let him in. My son tells me he's lost all respect for me. You're a pussy. I can't believe I'd ever see the day you'd be scared of a dog. You've been a dog. I was like, don't you shame me, you motherfucker. I'm trying to save my life. Fuck you. You're losing respect for me over I want to save my life. Fuck you. Get out of my house. Don't care if you ever come back. So we both called each other's bluff. I finally agreed to deal with the dog. And uh, we let Mozart in. He's been renamed before he gets home. Chris says, I'm not calling this dog killer. He's sweet. He's a baby. And, uh, and sure enough, he gets up in my lap, and his head is so big, and he's so excited, and he's panting so hard that his teeth hit you with every lick that he takes. <laughs> and your life flashes before your eyes. <laughs> his pictures are on my wall. The biggest head of any fucking dog I've ever seen in my life on a standard little pit bull's body. It looked like he was a science experiment uh, of how big of a head can we put on a dog and it still live and be able to walk because that's what they did to this dog. So we let him in and we all fall in love with him. And he says, Dad, will, will you take him? Will you keep him? I said, no, I can't do that. I've already got two cow. I just lost Misty. I'm not ready to replace her yet, but uh, I'll post on Facebook and we'll find him home. Dad, no one's going to take that dog. Look at him. Only people like me and you that really understand pit bulls are going to give this dog a shot. We tried to give two cow away for five weeks, and that's why you got him now, because nobody would come and get him. And, I, and he said, if you can't give two cow away, as adorable as he is, you can never give this dog away when they see his head and realize he's a full-blooded blue pit. And I said, well, I think somebody will take him. So sure enough, I put him up on, fa on Facebook the next day. We have six people in a bidding war battling to see who gets him. Uh, I had several people offering me fish dinners from Clarksville that lived in Indiana, mainly because I told them that's what the price was. Uh, the bid got up to five boxes of Clarksville seafood because I will not set foot in there anymore. This is the only way I saw I could get some. So I've made a deal. I've got a guy in Clarksville that helped me move, and he said he will bring me five boxes of Clarksville seafood at about 12 bucks a box if I will let him have that dog. I said, deal. Well, I had several other people wanting the dog, and I said, no, nope, no deal. I know the guy. He helped me move. I'm going to let him have the dog. So then my ex-girlfriend, uh, daughter, um, who has known me for 24 years, she says, oh, my God, my husband loves that dog. He's been texting me and calling me all day. Okay, have you talked to Kenny? Can we get the dog? Is there any way we can get the dog? And we live in E-Town, and we got a great big backyard, and, oh, my God, we already have a female pit here. Uh, has he been fixed? No, he's not all perfect. We would like for him to have babies. Um, we really know how to take care of a pit. We're the perfect family. Well, honey, I'm sorry. I've already given him away for five boxes of fish. I just looked this picture up on Facebook, and holy you, shit, man, that dog has a big head. Are you seeing the one where he's licking my arm and then the other one where he's smiling right next to my head? I'm looking at the one where he's right next to your head. And oh, my God. God. I was scared wondering if I'd have a head before I picture <laughs> Is that the biggest mouth you've ever seen on a dog in your life? That I don't know how this is possible, but his mouth is bigger than his head, and his mouth yes, is on his it head. It actually is. His mouth, <laughs> God, is on, his mouth is bigger than his head, and I don't know how you do that. I agree with you. So, he looks like a cartoon. This looks Photoshopped. Yeah, it, it, don't, it don't look real, but he is. You Holy see the shit. Like, laying on the one on the doggy bed that says wolf on it, and his little tongue is sticking out of his mouth, and he looks so sweet and innocent. No, my computer can't scroll past his head. <laughs> yeah, probably not. You might need four or five days to get to any other pictures. Uh, but he is. Uh, but so Chris renamed him Mozart because we thought we could give him away if his name wasn't Killer. Maya's betting me that nobody will take the dog. They're all going to be scared to death. They're all stupid fucks. No, no, they're not going to give him a chance. Six people battling for his dog inside of like an hour or two. So now the girl, my ex-girlfriend's daughter's working me and working me. And please, Kenny, please, you got to let me and my husband have that dog. I know you've already told somebody else, have they come and got it? Well, no, no. When are they coming? I said, after work today at 5 o'clock. Kenny, we will come there tomorrow. We'll drive from E-Town tomorrow to get this. It's like a 90-mile round trip. 
We'll come there tomorrow if you tell us we can have the dog. I said, well, honey, I've already made a deal with the other people. Well, what deal? I said, well, I told them, you know, I wanted five boxes of fish. We'll pull over and we'll get you six boxes of fish. I said, from where? She says, Moby Dick. I said, God damn. So I look at the pictures and I see the kid laying on the other pit bull and the other pit bull don't give a shit. They're just, he, he's become the pillow for the kids. And uh, the pit bull is like two years old and Mozart's like a year and a half. So finally, I had to dick over the people. I, I said, well, I didn't really dick them over. He dicked himself over. He says, I will call you at 5 o'clock sharp. I wrote back, if you haven't called me by 5.15, he goes to the second place finisher. And well, i got to get permission from my girlfriend, but I know she's going to love him. So I will call you at 5 o'clock sharp. I, I give him until 5.25, no phone call. I call uh, my friend uh, uh, down in E-Town, Paulette. And so you can look up on Facebook and say, I'm not making these names up. It was Jack that I fucked over in Clarksville because he didn't call me by 525. And I tell Paulette, Paulette, he hadn't called me. A deal's a deal. And I told him that if I hadn't heard from him by 515, the second place finisher was going to get the dog. I said, so if you want him, he's yours. She calls her husband. He's ecstatic. He's almost willing to come at night. I said, no, nah. I said, I'll keep him till the next time you got to come here. When are you coming again? Well, I come to see mom on Friday. Well, it's Monday. I said, well, all right. I said, but the bad thing is we're going to get attached to him, and we're not going to want to let him go, but I can't keep another pit, so you will get him, but come on. So not only am I attached to him, Maya likes him pretty good, but she's got a stronger heart than the rest of us, so she knows he's got to go. Chris is begging me by Friday, call her and tell her no. Call her and tell her she can't come. Tell her we want him. I said, honey, I'm going to get stuck with him most of the time. I cannot do it. I'm getting old. I'm fat. Uh, I, I can't take care of two and three dogs, and that that's going to be three. I can't do it. Oh, I'll, I'll, I won't bring him. I said, yeah, you will. If you work, i got to take care of him. I said, and I can't take care of three dogs. I said, so no, she gets the dog. And right up to the time they get here, he's pitching a fit. He wants that dog. He's, he's willing to get a divorce over it. He's willing <laughs> to speak to me over it. He wants that dog. And uh, so finally they get here and he sees they're a good family and they got four kids, one on the way. And uh, the guy was crying when he hugged him. He said, oh, my God, this is the dog I've been looking for all my life. And Chris takes him for a long walk around Cherokee Park. Uh, mind I had the most pre prestigious address in all of Louisville, by the way. I got no business over here, but I'm in and <laughs> can't get rid of me now. And uh, I'm trying to trailer park this place out as much as I can. <laughs> I've got one of those patio umbrellas out on my porch for when it rains. I've got it blocking sunshine. But back to the dog. Did you have a couch out there? I did. <laughs> but, <laughs> no shit. <laughs> I, had, I had a, uh, what do you call them, a futon. I had a futon <laughs> because uh, I got a new love seat the other day. So I decided I'm going to make the brown basically sofa. I mean, this ain't no cheap futon. This is a nice one. Uh, they sell for like three hundred ninety nine dollars. I had a distributor where I bought it from them for two hundred, and it's uh, got the storage thing underneath where you can lift it up and store all kinds of shit. So I really kind of hated to let it go, but it was one of the most uncomfortable sofas to sit on, especially for a man my size I've ever been on. So I put it on the porch. Well, the bad thing is, <laughs> there's about one foot of porch out there now. <laughs> all my porch has gone away. <laughs> if you got a chair in Ottoman, there's plenty of room. That goddamn couch is taken up. Oh, 88.8% .8 of the porch. <laughs> so that thing had to go to. And some ignorant friend of mine, I'm going to call him an ex-friend because he's a fucking moron. Uh, but he comes over. He's just one of these people. That he's got he's to gotta trump every story you tell. He claimed to have been in the wrestling business. And no, he wasn't. He was in some backyard organization that ran in an abandoned warehouse on the second floor. And we heard the stories back in the early, mid-90s that this idiot had fallen through the second floor of where he's trying to run wrestling shows at. And the fans had to climb a ladder, I mean, and let's face it, it was friends and relatives and about 20 or 30 of them that would climb up these, this ladder in an abandoned warehouse to get to the second floor. And why the fuck the second what floor? The I said, how did you get the ring up there? He said, in pieces. I said, why the second floor? It was the only place that had an area big enough to put a ring and, and a few people. That doesn't well, make sense. Why didn't you just, I said, y'all, you were as a bunch of glorified fucking backyarders. Why didn't you just set it up in your goddamn backyard and wrestle on dry days, put a tarp over it or something? Oh, we didn't really think of that. I said, yeah, apparently not. <laughs> so we hear one idiot falls through the roof. Well, the idiot was him, the so-called owner, <laughs> the so-called owner of the company. And he apparently owned it with another idiot that ended up at OVW wanting to go through training class and to be a referee. 
And he was a stupid, a dumb fuck. As a, but OVW will take money from anybody. I'll just let you know that right now. If you got twenty five hundred dollars, have you ever you've heard of have horse will travel, or some or have gun whatever the saying is. I didn't forgot it. Have horse will travel seems to make more sense, but that's not the saying. Long story uh, short, Danny Davis needs your money. Yeah, Danny <laughs> Davis needs always has, always will. If you got twenty five dollars, uh, twenty five, well maybe even twenty five. But if you got twenty five hundred, fifteen hundred for beginner class, twenty five for advanced, and amazingly everybody that's got twenty five hundred dollars amazingly makes it to advanced class. Never seen anything <laughs> like it. It's a miracle how that happens. And uh, and some people are so bad that they have hung around for six, eight, ten, and eleven years, paying twenty five hundred up Christ. to continue to be trained to hopefully get better. Anybody with any integrity, any decency would say, boy. Been here a couple of years now, paying twenty five hundred dollars every six months, and you haven't really seemed to get any better. So I'm going to do you a favor. There's a gas station down the street doing some hiring. I think you're more qualified. <laughs> so we're going to save you that five grand a year you've been giving us because my conscience won't let me take your money anymore. So I want you to go get a job pumping gas or something. But no, not Danny Davis. They take these fuckers' money until the day they drain them dry. That's a pretty fucked up thing to do, man. I it really it, is. I think it is, too. I'm glad you agree with me, because I think it is, too, and they've always done that. One of my big problems, when they realize these people do not have what it takes, they continue to take their money, they find some way to get them on television somehow eventually. Uh, used to be uh, you wouldn't expect to get on TV for about two years. Now you can get, you can get on in about two weeks. <laughs> uh, it don't take too long, and some of them don't look like they have that much training. Uh, so did we wrap up the Mozart story? So yeah, Mozart's got a nice home. Uh, oh I got, yeah, I don't think we did. I, we? I, I, they fucked me on my Moby Dick fish though because it was supposed to have been two large dinner for twos and two large chicken strip dinners. Well, actually, we got one medium sized chicken strip dinner and one dinner for two. But they brought it in in a bag, and it's like a waitress when you tip a waitress. Mm -hmm. The waitress never looks to see how much of a tip you give her, right? Right. Well, I've actually had some idiots that think the waitress has no idea how much money you gave them. I got news for anybody that's that fucking stupid. The waitress puts the money in a special pouch in her apron or in a pocket on her body. Then she goes somewhere else in the building and she counts every fucking dime you gave her. She knows what your tip was. You can't roll up three ones and make her think you gave her 30. And I had an idiot tell me this, a family member. Oh, well, she don't know how much we gave her because I bitched them out for how little a tip she left because I got six of them fed for free. And at first she claimed she didn't tip her. And she said, oh, no, we left her a few dollars. I said, well, how many is a few? Well, it was about five dollars, maybe three, but I think it was five. I said, so in other words, you're lying. But uh, let's say it was three. I said, you mean to tell me she didn't look at you people like you were fucking thieves when six of <laughs> you ate for free on my word? And all you gave her was three fucking dollars. I said, my rules is three dollars a head. If you eat off my fame, you tip three dollars a head. And then I will settle up with them and give them some merchandise to cover what you ate. So, well, she doesn't have any idea what we gave her. She took the money and stuck it right in her, in her apron. I said, you fucking dumb idiot. You're married to a Mexican husband. Your Mexican husband has countless sisters who are servers. They've never exposed to you that they know to the penny, what every fucking moron tips them. I said, you're an idiot. You're a fucking idiot if you think that waitress doesn't know how much money you gave them. Well, she didn't even see us come in. She doesn't know we're with you. I said, you're the only motherfuckers that ever get to eat free off my dime. If anyone's eating free, they know Kenny Boland sent them. No one else in this fucking town has that clout. I'm not trying to blow my own horn, but I'm the only one who has guests that eat for free. So then when they see you don't have a ticket, oh, these are Kenny Boland's guests. I said, so now i got to go for and fix what you've done. I said, not only do i got to give them some merchandise to cover your meal, but now i got to tip because you didn't. I said, so thank you for fucking me over. And this is my fucking little cousin. Well, we didn't want to accept your free meal because we knew you'd get pissed. I said, so, see, you knew you was going to go up and fuck them over, is what you're telling me. Because that's the only way I'd get pissed, is if you didn't tip the waitress. That's the only thing you could do. You could start a fucking bar fight in there. You could have a food fight. You could fucking call the manager a cocksucker, but as long as you leave the waitress an $18 tip, we'd have been cool. I said, you ate six $17 meals, and you couldn't muster up a $10 fucking tip for the waitress? I'm sorry to get hot about this, guys, uh -huh. but that shit makes me mad. Hey, while we're on the subject, 
What I, subject? Uh, well, Mozart, cats, dogs, <laughs> fish. We're all over the place. Non tipping fucking Mexican Mary East. <laughs> well, speaking of restaurants, I saw on Twitter a I guess sign. We were, I guess we were talking about restaurants. It was a sign at the Neon Deli in Middletown, Connecticut. Give them a shout out. It read, please refrain from discussing mathematics while waiting in line. What the hell do you think happened for them to put up that sign? Middletown, Connecticut? Yeah. They don't want people talking about math while waiting in line. I'd love to have something funny to come up with on that, but I got nothing. <laughs> it's the it's one of the most bizarre signs I've ever seen. I can't I don't I even think, know where I you think, go with that. I, I think possibly that somebody like me who's saying what kind of sign can I put up here that people will just go, what the fuck? That what is mean? Maybe they were just tired. <laughs> they were just uh, tired um, of cheapskates trying I, to figure out I, how much the tip would be. I mean, the closest thing I could do and maybe put up something, no llamas allowed. <laughs> how many llamas have ever been walked into a restaurant in the United States? Other other countries, possibly. Uh, no llamas allowed. Uh, please keep your penis in your pants. But you know what? There's probably <laughs> restaurants that's been an issue. Um uh, if those of you wearing glass eyeballs, keep them in your head. But you know what? That could be an issue. That, that Sammy Davis Jr. may have ate there. <laughs> you never know. But don't discuss mathematics. I know Foghorn Leghorn once said, well, you can't argue with figures. So maybe that just keeps you from having an argument. I, you got me, man. I'm, yeah. I have to see. Maybe Cornette would have better shit. Who knows? Jimmy's a genius, you know. Just ask him. <laughs> Well, speaking of Jimmy Cornette, you said something about before the show started. Uh -huh. And if you don't want to talk about it, let me know. But you said something about Vince Russo. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> no, nah, go ahead. What do you got? <laughs> well, you said something about dealing with, the, I don't know if it was his secretary or something like that. Like I said, we can take all this out if you don't want to talk about it. I forget. Oh, oh, no, she's not a secretary. Okay. She doesn't book the shows. This is a girl that contacted, and it wasn't Cornette, it was me. She contacted me on Twitter. Her name was Sarah something or another. And uh, Sarah Rusi, because it sounded a lot like Russo. And uh, Sarah Rusi contacts me, and I ignore her for quite some time because I have no clue who she is. But I do notice she's got uh, a fair amount more followers than I've got. And I'm thinking, well, you know, I guess somebody thinks she's over. And then the next thing I know, I get a, a letter. We would love to have you on our show. And that's all it said, Sarah Rusi. Pretty pretty little girl. So I respond back. I said, what show? She says, oh, you've never heard of our show? I said, well, that's why I asked what show. So she says that she does a podcast and that she works in the Vince Russo network of uh, podcast shows. And that Vince recommended me for the show, said I'd be a great guest and we'd love to have you on our show. I said, well, if Vince uh, put his stamp of approval on you, that's good enough with me. I said, when do you want to do the show? So she tells me, Friday night, 8 o'clock. And I said, well, all right, good enough. I said, I'll be ready to go at 8 o'clock. Here's my Skype number. Y'all do do Skype, right? No, we do Google Hangout. I said, well, I've done shows on Google Hangout with Vince. We're good. We, I can do that. So I send her my email address, which my Google Hangout connected to, and uh, which I believe is a starmakerbowling at gmail.com. I'm never there, so it ain't going to do you no good to go there. But if you want, I won't be there. So, um, unless me and Sarah Rusi patch things up and I ain't looking for that. So they contact me. Well, I contact them. It's, it's eight Oh five. I'm waiting on them to call me. They haven't called me yet. I write her on Twitter at eight Oh five. I said, Hey guys, I'm sitting here ready to do the show. And then at eight 15, she writes back. I wrote the producer. Uh, he's still sleeping. We'll be ready in a few. Eight forty goes by. I said, well, it's eight 40 now. I've been waiting here 40 minutes. I said, uh, is he, is he ready to go? Yeah, he sent he sent you a request, but he says you haven't accepted it. I said, no. I said, I'm sitting here looking at my contact list right now. It says I have no contacts. He hasn't written me. So he's apparently sending his request to starmaker at gmail.com, not starmakerbowl. I said, here's the fucking address that I gave you before. It's written down. Cut, copy, and paste it so you don't fuck it up. Send it to this clown, and let's get this show going. I've been sitting here 48 minutes waiting to do this show. Okay, he sent you your request. I go look, and I still have no request, even though he's got all the information. So the next thing I know at, uh, oh, we're supposed to start at 8 o'clock. It's now 9.22, and my Google Hangout starts ringing. And I click it, 
And there's this goofy looking fuck with a bald head and glasses. No offense if that's anybody you know. <laughs> and um, he's sitting there looking into what looks to be a cell phone and says, are you ready to do the show, Mr. Bowling? Truly an honor to have you on. I'm a friend of yours on Twitter. And I said, what's your name? And he tells me. And I said, yeah, I've seen that name. I said, so how are we doing this? Uh, where's Sarah? Well, we're having trouble getting a connection between me, you, and Sarah, so we're going to record it this way. I said, what way is that? Well, I'm just a producer, so I won't be on camera, so I'm going to use my phone, and I'm going to record her off my laptop, and she's going to interview you from my laptop. <laughs> what the hell? And that is the same response I gave him, the one you're getting now. And let me give you 15 seconds of what that response was. Okay, you get the idea. We <laughs> I was counting down. We still had three more seconds. We had three more seconds. Yeah, I jumped the gun. <laughs> and um, and I said, uh, you know what? No, no, I don't think we are. So now she's saying, really? Is this how you want to do the show? And whatever his name was, I don't remember. And I said, no, I don't think we should really do a show like this. I said, uh, I just got all kinds of new audio uh, video equipment over here. And I don't know. I don't think this is a good idea. No, no, this will work. Here, let me show you. So he puts the camera on his laptop and gets in as tight as he can. And now she starts talking to me through the speaker of a laptop. I'm sitting over here with a thousand watts of doji, doji, Dolby <laughs> digital sound. I don't have doji. I, when it comes out, I'll have it, but I don't have it yet. And a Dolby digital sound, a 50-inch computer screen, which I probably need a 70. My vision's getting rough. And uh, the new mixer, four microphones. I'm I'm set up big time. All four microphones on camera. You've seen the test video I sent you, right, Jason? Yeah, yeah. Shit, sounding, shit sounding good and looks good, don't it? And by the way, can yeah. I can I get your permission to put that on the Facebook page? I don't care. Go right ahead. <laughs> Go right ahead. And because uh, it does look ridiculous as shit, to be honest. With you. <laughs> I loved it, man. It was. It honestly, it honestly to God, uh, people have said, "God damn, good! You look like you're doing a press conference." Well, that's the look I'm going for, you idiots. And if you're listening to this, make sure you like the Facebook page so you can see that video. It's great. Yeah, it's. Oh, oh my God! I forgot about the video I sent you. <laughs> well, I guess that. Yeah, shit. Whatever. So uh, <laughs> I forgot about that. So. Uh, so uh, it's now becoming evident that I have stumbled into Disney world and Mickey mouse is in rare form. And I said, uh, I can't, I can't even hear her. I don't know what she's saying. Well, she'll say it and I'll repeat it to you. I said, no, you're oh not. <laughs> no, you're not, not going to do that. I said, guys, I've been waiting an hour and a half patiently because your friends of Vince Russo. I said, what is she wearing? Oh, that's her. That's her negligee. What? I said, why? Well, she does all the shows in, in, in negligees and lingerie. I mean, that's great. Uh, but... I said, well, I, I said, I'm not in my negligee <laughs> or my lingerie. I feel overdressed for this occasion, and I'm only wearing a T-shirt. I said, so, no, I tell you what. Why don't you all get your all shit together? And what is today? Wednesday? Let's try this on Friday or Saturday. How's that sound? Okay, well, we can do that. We're sorry. I think it'll work this way, Mr. Bowen. I said, well, you think wrong, because I'm not going to do this. I said, so you all get your shit together. I've done these shows with Vince on Google Hangouts. They always work fine. You're obviously doing something wrong, so when you figure it out, we'll do it. And I said, I've seen a few of your Google Hangout shows. You all know, what are you all doing wrong? What, what is wrong? Why can't you get three people on this? Well, Mr. Bowen, why don't you try this? I said, I'm not trying anything. I'm not trying to be a dick, guys, but you invited me to do your show, and you act like you knew what the fuck you were doing. It's becoming quite obvious that you don't. And if you guys notice that my voice changes a lot, if I speak into four different sides of this microphone, you get four different sounds. Uh, and it is designed that way. It's not a flaw. And I'm just tired and lazy, and just uh, I lean, and then I end up on another side of the microphone. So um, that explains that. But no, uh, so the more I thought about it, the more I said, you know what? I don't have a whole lot of uh, moral values, dignity, or integrity, but I've got enough that I'm not going to do this show. So uh, <laughs> I blocked him on Twitter and Facebook. I deleted her, didn't block her, just made room for more fans. And uh, they wrote me, we still doing the show? And I wrote back, no. <laughs> that, was, uh, 
that is all that the uh, apparently that answer was good enough because they haven't pursued me for anything else. And Russo has been such a mental mess lately uh, over dealing with this cornet shit that um, uh, he really hasn't even thought about bringing up. Why didn't I do Sarah Russi's show? But when he feels better, I guess we'll talk about it. But uh, no, it's uh, they're they're not going to be getting me. I love Vince. I'll do anything Vince wants me to do for his show. But uh, Sarah Russi had a couple shots at it and it didn't. And maybe you blame her producer. I don't know. But either way, I won't be doing that show. Yeah. And there was there was one show I did about two years ago that about eight minutes in, I realized these people didn't have a fucking clue as to who I was, didn't know what questions they asked, had no idea what I'd done in my career. They were just popping themselves because they heard Kenny Boland be a good guy to get on their podcast. They knew nothing about me. So about eight minutes in, I said, guys, I said, did y'all do any homework for this fucking show whatsoever? No, man, we just thought we'd fly with it. And I said, well, you flew with it and you just crashed. Good day. And eight minutes in, I hung up on those fuckers <laughs> and went, God damn, you try to be nice. You try to give some of these up and coming podcasts a chance to hopefully, you know, uh, at least some of my fans will drift over. But the thing I've noticed is that my fans know better. They, <laughs> they will only go. They will only go to the decent shows. And I think mine and your shows have normally done pretty well for the most part. Right. Yeah. And me and Brian last, whenever I've done his shows, he's always gotten great responses. I'm the five of the top six rated shows that Jimmy Cornette ever did. Uh, Lawler says he's never gotten so much attention. Uh, he didn't say it to me, but he's saying it all over to everybody else that having Bowling on the show, regardless of how far south it went, has done <laughs> phenomenal things for our attention and our ratings. Maybe we'll patch things up with him and have him on again. Well, that hadn't happened yet. And, uh, but oh, I'd, I'd love to go one more time. Uh, only this time I'm being escorted with five Louisville police to make it fucking fair and even. <laughs> so, that's uh, a good idea. Well, I've, I, I learned, I learned quickly. Uh, I had no back. I had Styles Bitchley, my driver with her, and uh, he's named Bitchley for a reason. He ain't going to fight nobody. That son of a bitch ran. I think he moved the car down about six extra feet just to get out of the way of the cops that were beating me. I thought he was going to try and get me in the car and make a getaway. No, he's getting away. So Styles was an ass. I'll have I'll have a man take me down next time. When your name's Styles Bitchley, you got to figure figure you're getting what you paid for when it comes to Styles Bitchley. So, but he's my driver, pumps my gas, and I normally sleep, and he drives me to wherever it is I got to go. And and that's another thing. I was probably in a bit of a mood when I got in Lawler's anyway because I told Styles to wake me up about 15 minutes before we got there. He pulls up at the door. Here you are, Mister Bowen. You ready to do that podcast? And I looked at him, I said, I told you to wake me up 15 minutes ago. Well, you were sleeping so good, Mr. Bowling, I didn't want to wake you up. And I said, even though I ordered you to wake me up. So you just can't get good health these days. But I've had Styles forever. I mean, he'll have to fuck up, I guess, worse than this to fire him. But we'll keep him on a little longer, I guess. So I've been doing all the talking. You got any questions? <laughs> well, I would like to know where did my birth... Start, did, did we start this at 8 o'clock? <laughs> Something like that. Say. Sneaking up on two in the morning. I think we've been yeah. doing sound checks since eight. Yeah, I think. Yeah, we did sound checks since eight, and we actually went on the air about at twelve twenty or something. Four hours of sound check. I'm a little picky with these new microphones. I want it done right. And speaking of microphones, I, I was my birthday was was not that long ago. Mm -hmm. I was kind of expecting to get one of those for my birthday. You know, that's funny because I was thinking the same thing. Because I was on your birthday, I figured you got some birthday money, and I was expecting you would have ordered one. <laughs> you know what? I did a radio show. So I, I guess we both kind of assumed the wrong thing, didn't we? <laughs> I did a radio show the day before my birthday. Yeah. And I brought up that the next day was my birthday. I don't remember what I said, but did the you phrase say birthday, birthday money. Wish, did you say that I, that I, I prayed and I wish that I, I get a bowl and medium microphone <laughs> for my birthday? <laughs> Well, the phrase might have worked out. I might have heard about it, and it might have worked out in your favor. The phrase birthday money came out of my mouth. Yeah, birthday money? <laughs> the guy was from New York. Starts uh -huh. cracking up laughing at me. <laughs> saying, How old are you turning a kid? Because I haven't said birthday money since yeah. I was 12. <laughs> I, I use everybody that writes me. Well, not a, not, no, I take that back. Everybody that I write. If I see that they have, uh, I check to see if they've ever written me. And then if they have written me, and I do this every birthday, this is every day, 
tells you what a life I got. <laughs> so every birthday I check, and if they've written me, I see what the most recent thing is they've said to me. And if the most recent thing, you know what? This has turned into a very racist uh, uh, show. I've been sitting here talking all this time on the black microphone, and I ain't spent no time on so Hang on. Black microphone, go away. Black, black microphone. <laughs> Come on in here, white microphone. Or is the white microphone? How's that sound? Equal time. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that black microphone. He's led me down a lot of stories I didn't even tell tonight. White microphone won't do that to me. <laughs> so we're on the white microphone now. This is microphone one. Black microphone's microphone four. Just happened to be that way, folks. It wasn't uh, anything racist. Uh, just to prove that, uh, orange microphone is two. And uh, your favorite, blue microphone. Blue microphone's number three. But they're both turned off tonight. I gave them the night off because they worked hard last night. So, uh, and Blue Microphone took the road trip with me down to Memphis, by the way. Uh, so when you hear me order Lawler that I'm going to set in on a show, but I'm not going to talk on that prehistoric shit he's got, <laughs> Styles bitchly hooked up a set of Beach by Bowens and hooked up my Blue Bowen Media microphone. And uh, we, even, we even, just in case we needed it, we had the new Bowen balls. You've heard about the Bowen balls, right? Yeah. The Bowen ball. We had two of the, uh, the best sellers, Bowen's Blue Balls. And we had two of those there just in case anybody wanted to hold them or fondle them or even buy them. <laughs> and none of that happened. <laughs> but uh, we had them just in case. And uh, those are Bluetooth spherical balls that uh, patch into your phone, your laptop, your tablet, whatever you got. And uh, you can listen to your music. You can answer to your phone, take them to the bathroom with it. You know, where, where the fuck ever, kitchen. Uh, someplace you might not want to take your phone. You might not want to risk your phone being in the bathroom because a lot of stupid fucks I know drop their phones down the commode. One of those stupid fucks was the big show. He did that. <laughs> Lost his phone at an autograph signing we was doing in Indianapolis. His phone fell in the fucking commode. Oh, shit. So he got mad, and he threw it up against the wall. It broke in two pieces. I went and picked them up, made him sign them, and I just found them. The other <laughs> no day. shit. I just found them the other day. I got him to sign them. This was in 1999 or 2000 he did that, and I found the phones. I got them in here in the living room, and I'm thinking about maybe auctioning those off one day for anybody that would like to have big show's phone. That he dropped in the toilet, broke, and then when he calmed down, he signed them for me. I thought you were announcing my birthday present. <sighs> no. <laughs> I moved over to the white mic. What was I saying on the black mic that I felt should move over to the white mic? I don't remember. And uh, by the way, the black microphone, um, no offense to anybody who likes this color, but the black microphone just days ago, replaced the pink microphone. But there's been a lot of talk on other shows that now want the pink microphone to come back because they feel the pink microphone adds a little... And you probably have the picture with the pink microphone. And there's a lot of people making demands that the pink microphone come back because they think black is just too blah, you know, just, you know, just nothing to it. Just, you know, and it's got a black head on it, too. So it, 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 it just... And, and a black shock mount. So it's just all black. Uh, I can see that. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I have colored, I colored uh, uh, windscreens. They're not as good as the manufactured ones that come with the mics. These are much thicker, and they really save me on my P's, S's, and T's. Because just to give you an idea, I'm going to show you why I use these windscreens or pop filters, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so now we're going to talk uh, without the, the the filter. You notice that got a little louder, right? Mm-hmm. We don't have the windscreen. When you talk about P's and S's and T's, and especially P P's, when you and see when you talk about P's, you hear that you know that fucking miserable P, fucking you know. See, see what I'm saying? Yeah. So now, so now I'm gonna put it back, put, put, put it back on. <laughs> God damn, what a cartoon is this? All right, so now I have the P's on. So I'm talking about the P's now, and the P's aren't doing that. And you can talk about the P's and the pop filters and and the pussies and 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 the, and the psychos, which you don't pronounce P that way when you say psycho. <laughs> And, uh, but you, you see what it does, right? Yeah. So these fuckers really work. Cause I always heard where well, you use your pop filter because it saves you on your P's, T's and S's. Well, it fucking really does. And I never believed that. Yeah. I got them on all mine. So sometimes when people smarter than you tell you something, you should fucking listen to them. Cause I didn't. And Christopher doesn't like how they look. So he tried to take the filter off on the live bowling alley. And I went after him like he'd stolen my firstborn, which turned out he is my firstborn. So that was weird. <laughs> and uh, so I made him put the filter back on. And that's why I just gave you a short example to why all you beginners out there and all you goddamn backyard podcasters that aren't pros like me and Jason, 
And let's face it, Jason is really not in my league, but I'll put him there today. <laughs> and uh, But yeah, that's why you use your goddamn pop filter, because you listen to people smarter than you. And if you're brand new in the podcast world, including Hacksaw Duggan, I'm smarter than you. And you got no business in my business. <laughs> I heard your podcast sucks. You should carry a two by four and cut lumber somewhere because apparently I haven't even heard your show, but I've heard the reviews and I've heard Pritchard's and I listen to Pritchard's show a lot. Well, that's kind of a lie. I've never heard too many words out of Pritchard's show because I'm normally sound asleep in the fetal position by the time I hear about eight words come out of that show. <laughs> So that's our, our thing on the on the on the Pritchard show. Six million downloads, my ass. Come. He's full of shit. That's why I don't even tell anybody how many downloads I get because so many people just lie about their numbers. You know well, everybody does. Uh, I won't be able to because I get my numbers every day sent to me by email, and I can promise you those are. I, I wish they were bullshit numbers. Uh, really, uh, I don't know yet because we haven't done a show. What I'm getting is feedback on people that are going to look at the trailer. And let's face it, that ain't a whole shitload of people. But when we do the first show, and they know we're going to talk about what happened in Memphis, the mauling in Memphis, the potential Memphis massacre, it could have been one. And uh, when we talk about that, and we talk about what's going on with Jimmy, and what's going on with Vince Russo, and my son is probably going to make a short political appearance because he wants to piss some people off too. See, if I'd have said piss people off without this pop filter, it would have sounded like (laughs) shit. You would have pissed some people off. Pissed some people off doing that. All you right. let me know when your show goes uh, goes live, and I'll promote it here on the podcast, and we'll, we'll get you a pretty good bump, too. Well, it'll never go live, if you mean live. <laughs> well, we're not even doing live, are we? We're Are we live at one thirty four a.m. in the morning? No. no good thing. Nobody fucking listening except my fans. I know your fans <laughs> go to bed at like 8 o'clock, don't they? Something like that. You, Cornet, Cornette's fans go to bed about 6.30. Cornette's in bed by 5.30. I'm glad you brought him up. That's the uh, last thing I wanted to talk to you about. I had never, and it's the last thing I'd like to talk about. <laughs> we do a thing on the show called This Week's Dumbass of the Year. Well, that's the perfect person to bring up, then. Perfect per- <laughs> See, if I'd have said perfect person without the pop filter, it would have uh, pissed some people off. Well, I'm going to do it. Hang on. Before we get into it, if I'd have said perfect person on the podcast without uh, using the pop filter, I'd have pissed some people off. <laughs> There we go. Now it's back on. That's why you use it, folks. This is an educational program, if nothing else. I had a rundown of things I wanted to talk to you about. Bet we've talked about none of them. Kind of, yeah. One of them I want to talk to you you about. You shouldn't have pissed me off. (laughs) One of them I want to talk to you about later is your brother living with Colonel Sanders. We'll get into that on the next episode. We'll do the that next show you're on. But that, that is a bit of a lengthy story, and we probably should really let some people go to bed, regardless what time they're hearing is. But I was looking, like I said, I usually have a segment called This Week's Dumbass of the Year, and nothing compared to what you did to Jim Cornette. Oh, my God. So Jim Cornette is you know this. Hmm. Oh, well, it's gone now. We recording or not? Yeah. So the fans heard all this? Well, I'll probably take it out and post. <laughs> I forget where we were, but uh, you were going to talk to me about uh, uh, something about Cornette. Yeah, I was. I was saying that I scoured the internet looking for this week's dumbass of the year, and you come up with Jimmy Cornette. Well, I'll well, be happy to talk about. That. Nothing could top the story that that <laughs> we have in store for the listeners at home. You want to take it away? Well, give me one second here because I was fucking with my phone the way most rude people do <laughs> when, they're, when they're either at a funeral, a wedding, or a dinner. And I was fucking with my phone. I was going to fuck with you and play Cake by the Ocean again, but I thought <laughs> I'd plugged it. <laughs> so I don't guess I'll be playing Cake by the Ocean unless I go to the trouble to get Styles bitchly in here and hook all my shit up again. So uh, what happened was is that in 1976, 1976, I had gotten fired from Dairy Queen. I'm sorry, Burger Queen, back when it was called uh, Queenie B. And the slogan was, come follow Queenie B. It's Burger Queen for me. And that was the slogan. And Queenie B was in a fucking Bumblebee suit, and she would do personal appearances and everything. And uh, I bent Queenie B over and had sex with her at a dairy. No, I didn't. <laughs> I, I'd never fuck a bee in the ass, I promise. <laughs> and so I didn't have sex with Queenie B. Even though, well, of course, you have to be an idiot to think you wouldn't. 
especially if it was forced sex. And you, you trust me, a human is going to have to force themselves on a bumblebee. So I didn't do that. But what I did do is I played softball for their for their uh, softball team, and they wanted to win the Lagrange Regional Districts. Sorry, KLRN radio listeners, but that's the end of the episode for today. The podcast went a little long, and we had to cut it short for the radio broadcast. But if you want to hear the rest of the show, you can go to we don't have cookies dot Lipson, L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com and listen to the rest of the episode. Tomorrow I'll be back with another great show. Coincidentally, that show went a little short. So after that show is over, I will be airing the rest of this tomorrow on this station. Same time, same place. Hope I see you there.